I just wanted to run through the infection prevention and control uh, new standards. I know that some of you have looked at them, some of you haven't, but we just picked out a few things to run through. So it's National Standards for Infection Prevention and Control in Community Services. So this is new and it will relate to all of you. Okay, again, funny enough, it consists of eight teams covering communication well with people involving people making decisions about their care. So again, having the service user, the resident, at the center of um, uh, of the service, providing care in a clean and safe environment, prescribing antimicrobial medication in a safe manner, and educating people about how to protect themselves from acquiring uh, infections. Uh, for example, giving people practical information about good hand hygiene practice and the importance of um, vaccinations. Your PIC responsibilities. <coughs> so, staff competence ensure staff competence in the application of standard precautions and protective measures to achieve basic level of infection prevention and control. So, that's HICWA 2018B. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, what I want to think about. Ensure all unvaccinated residents or respite admissions during the influenza season season receive influenza vaccine, ideally two weeks before admission or as, as soon as possible after admission. That's very specific. Um, okay, so ensure that there are clear arrangements in place for staff making referrals to infection prevention control and public health professionals who have expertise in infection prevention and control for, uh, for advice and support maximize the uptake of influenza vaccine and offer vaccines to all unvaccinated staff members during the influenza outbreak. Okay, ensure that any information distributed or collected in relation to infection prevention does not infringe on the personal data of the resident or staff. So there we go, we go into our GDPR uh, a data protection at the end. So they're bringing a data uh, protection into it. Um, be accountable for decisions and reports sent to HIPAA, HSC, Medical Officers of Health, Health Professional Surveillance Centre, Environmental Health Officer, and Food and Safety Authority. <laughs> you have a lot of jobs. Approve the Infection Prevention and Control Program to review uh, and review close out of report um, <coughs> antibiotics, your micro, uh, antimicrobial use within the organisation. I saw recently that in a paper organisation um, that they have a, a front page on their cardex and it's um, a listing for each resident the date, the time, the type of antibiotic they were put on and the reason for it. So it was great for the quarterlies to come back that they just had to pull those out and to gather that data when you don't have an electronic system to help you rather than having to troll, I thought that was a great idea, <laughs> rather than having to troll through all your card access um, that you have that there. So uh, it was a, a really good idea. Um, so ensure the outbreak is managed in accordance with best practice. So there you go, uh, your outbreak and what you're going to do. Give so consideration to the impact of visiting restrictions on residents and their families. So what do you do? Do you have a blanket restriction on the visiting or do you let one visitor for two hours per day go into the resident ensuring that they use all precautions when they come in again it's up to you as an organization to decide on what levels that you're going to use and how you're going to restrict it does anybody have a plan in place or is it really on the day and what the infection and what the outbreak is it's also the layout of the organization if you have well, uh, a residential home that has access and you're, it has different, you don't have to go into the main centre in order to go up to the third level where there's no outbreak. That might allow you to have visitors for that whole third level, let's say. However, if you have to go in the main door into the ground floor level where all the residents are, 
and this big outbreak there, that might be uh, a good idea. Okay, and then again, ensure measures are in place to safeguard residents and staff visitors from infection and evaluate the adherence to the program. So again, it's looking at your waste management process. Um, so ensuring adherence to the process. So how do you ensure adherence to the process? Back to Derek's audits. You're going to audit the process to make sure that there's after an outbreak, you review it, you have a debrief, and you audit the process internally to ensure that you covered every angle. So again, the registered provider, ensure that procedures are consistent with your legislation, uh, approve and support the uh, infection prevention and control program. So again, when you've got your policies and procedures, um, when you've got new guidance coming out, it's probably time for you to update your policies and procedures in line with this guidance to make sure that your staff are following the procedure. Um, so. Uh, that, that's where it is. Um, so ensure that the overall accountability and responsibility and authority <coughs> for infection control and antimicrobial storage within the residential home. So again, it's identifying that person within the organization. In many of the smaller homes, it will be the PIC. It comes under your remit. However, in larger facilities, or facilities with many different units, it might be one person that monitors all the units. However, there might be linked nurses within there. And it's ensuring that that role, whether they have that responsibility for infection prevention and control, that those roles and responsibilities are in their job description. I mean, I think every job description now has infection prevention and control <laughs> in it. Uh, it has some element of infection prevention and control, but if they are responsible for the audit, for the antimicrobial stewardship, for the management of outbreaks, that should go into their job description as well. So this shall include accountability and responsibility for overseeing the implementation of the national standards for infection prevention and control and community services. So if you don't have an infection prevention and, and, and control program, it's time to implement it. And so approve and support the infection prevention and control uh, program, approve the close out of the report. Uh, so again, bring it to the management team. If we bring it back to our teams and committees, if we're looking at the service, they will need to know about the infection prevention and control. And then uh, for catering, for uh, housekeeping staff, they need to know about this program. And so do the care staff need to know. And in fact, so do the residents need to know. So it's about bringing it and communicating it through the organization. Okay. So uh, maintain the environment which is safe and ensure outbreaks are notified to people within appropriate time frames. Again, it's um, making sure that that is